cruise missiles, the centerpiece of Russia's campaign of intimidation in Ukraine, terrorizing civilians far from the front lines. The Kremlin leadership champions its missile program as an example of Russia's technological advancement, but an insider investigation has found that one of its most important plants, despite Western sanctions, operates with outside help. Meet the Iskander, one of the most frequently used ground-launched cruise missiles in Russia's arsenal. It can hit cities in Ukraine from a distance of 300 miles, putting it out of range of retaliatory strikes. But it doesn't come cheap, costing the Russian military around $3 million a pop. This summer, seven people were killed and more than 150 injured when Russia fired an Iskander into central Chernihiv in northern Ukraine. The terrifying moment of impact was caught on video by a bystander. This is the Kinjal, essentially an air-launched version of the same missile. But this one's trumpeted as hypersonic and costs even more to make, close to 10 million. Равного по возможностям оружия нет ни у кого в мире, кроме России. И создан этот внушающий страх недосягаемый ракетный комплекс в подмосковной Коломне. Both weapons are manufactured here at the MKB Design Bureau, just outside Moscow. It's owned by Rostec, a sprawling weapons conglomerate that's been subject to U.S. and EU sanctions since 2014. Insider investigative journalist Sergei Yezhov has uncovered a network of Western technology firms and Russian intermediary companies that have helped MKB secure the machine tools and electronics it's needed to ramp up its production of missiles for the war in Ukraine. And so far, the authorities in the US and the EU have done nothing to impose sanctions against them. Take these Japanese ESPEC testing chambers seen in an MKB promotional video. They're used to expose missile components to extreme temperatures and were shipped by a company in Poland called Intertrans a month after the full-scale invasion commenced last year. Customs records show Sandvik drills were imported straight from Berlin in January of this year. Machine tools used to manufacture parts on site come from Germany's KEB, and multiple American Haas machine tools are also visible on KBM's factory floor in its own promotional videos. The Kinjal's targeting system is made by another Rostec-owned company that got the microchips it needs from a German firm called Advantech GmbH as recently as March of last year. The Kinjal supply chain truly spans the whole of the Western alliance. One major Rostec supplier is ETS Electronics. It sourced microchips from well-known American firms like Texas Instruments and analog devices, both used in the Iskander, through a Chinese intermediary called ETS Electronics LTD earlier this year. ETS doesn't try very hard to mask its links to Rostec. It was created by a low-level employee of the defense conglomerate named Yekaterina Kulakovskaya, seen here, explaining how the company gets around sanctions. ETS has so far avoided being added to EU sanctions, despite its appearance at Russia's Army 2022 conference. It was also awarded a certificate by the Russian defense minister himself. Ukrainian investigators routinely collect downed missiles to identify the components the weapons are made with. In the Kinjal alone, they've identified 48 foreign components, many of them made by companies from countries that have imposed sanctions on Russia, including the United States, Germany, Switzerland, Japan, and the Netherlands. 
Meanwhile, Russia's president has championed the Kinjal as a superweapon immune to Western air defense systems because of its supposed hypersonic capabilities. Ukrainian officials believe its capabilities are somewhat exaggerated. So this one was shot down by a Patriot missile? By one of the defense systems that the United States provided. Якби була швидкість ще більше, може б її не взяли. А так достатня була швидкість для ураження ракети. Russia has repeatedly claimed that its targets are only ever military. In March, the Russian media reported on one such strike, claiming a Kinjal had destroyed a NATO base in Ukraine, even though there aren't any NATO bases in Ukraine. В результаті удару уничтожений. До 180 іностранних наймників і крупна партія іностранного вооруження. Then, on October 5th, Russia conducted a very real strike on the village of Hroza in the Kharkiv region. It was the single largest loss of life since the start of the war killing 59 people at a memorial service, including a six-year-old. Russia's UN ambassador justified the strike by claiming it was a funeral for a, quote, high-ranking Ukrainian nationalist. Since the annexation of Crimea, we've imposed 11 rounds of sanctions against Russia in order to send a clear message about the severity of the consequences for its actions. But Russia's only increased attacks against civilians using Western technology. Clearly, sanctions aren't doing what they're supposed to. So maybe it's time Western governments change their approach and put penalizing Western companies at the center of their strategy in order to send industry a message that they're finally serious about sanctions enforcement.